found number eight, and I have found number ten. We want to go to the Hogwarts today. This is about nine. Nine should be around here, and then nine and three quarters will be just about here. So if I go into this wall, I think I should be able to... I don't understand. Harry Potter, please. I don't understand. Uh, uh, Harry Potter, please. Ding dong. Ding dong. Oh, what's that? There's an owl. It seems to be on this penis. It's Admiral Akbar. It's a trap. Don't walk into it. It's a trap. What do you mean it's a trap? Oh. Uh, uh, Harry Potter, please. Three, two, two one. one. Look at what's behind me. Plants and shit. So let's talk about nature. What do you think about nature? I think nature is a trap. It's a word that means basically everything. Because a lot of people say nature is plants, right? They say it's the ecosystem. They say, so it's anything but man. But that's the problem. Because how can it be anything but man? Nature is everything. So when you say something is not natural, it doesn't mean anything. What does natural mean? You have to define your words, you know? Why would nature only be this? Why would it only be green stuff? Where's the limit? What is natural? A lot of people would say that human activity is not natural. Or, oh, you're gay, that's not natural. But see, I, I have to disagree with that. I have to say, well, whatever exists is natural. That's what it means. Nature is, is life. We are part, we are not just humans inside a world. It feels like that. But remember what I said last episode about, about, about space, about the, the, the space between, between this camera's lens. <laughs> And me, that space is air. We are part of an ecosystem. We are natural. So whatever our brains, our natural brains come up with is natural. So whatever we do is natural. You can't use that argument that says, oh, it's not natural, therefore it's bad. When you talk about the supernatural, when you talk about ghosts saying supernatural, what does it mean, supernatural? It, it, it means nothing. It's a word that means nothing. Nature is everywhere. And this is what I'm leading to. There is no good or bad. There is only choice. Where does good and bad come from? Is there an absolute? I say no. I think everything is relative. I think literally everything depends on the context. Even the laws of the universe, physicists agree that in other universes, which is something they don't like to talk about, but in other universes they may be different laws of nature. How far does it go? The reason I'm saying all this is because wondering about nature, wondering about good and bad, is what we're gonna have to do. Everyone's fighting. But if everything's natural, then we don't have anything to bicker about. We should be discussing good or bad. Not saying good is this, bad is this, like that. It's not like that, it's never a snap. It's a conversation, it's concession. Let's bring it back to something simple. Being gay is not natural, but it is. Whatever happens is natural. Let's hear it again, whatever happens is natural. Anything in the world. We cannot just shun anymore. You have to include. And sure, things can change. You can be influenced by your environment. But even if, even if being gay was a choice, why is it wrong? Why is it wrong to follow your feelings? And you don't have to justify it with some almighty, it's natural. It's not natural. We're, we're debating the wrong thing. Can't you see this debate is endless because it's not the right bloody debate. Everything is natural. Everyone should be included. In my opinion, majority is a mistake. Democracy should be unanimous. And when Marines said we leave nobody behind, I was touched. That's not what happens in real life, isn't it? It's just a Marine thing. Once it's out of the Marines, nobody cares. Oh, leave a man behind. Yeah, but leave a transgender person behind. Uh, apparently, we're going to leave this one behind. You can do whatever you want. Except when, and that's when you make the choice. Good or bad doesn't exist. Murder. Murder is bad, right? A dictator is about to press on a button that's about to send a nuclear missile to destroy the rest of the world. There is a marine right in front of him, and he's got a gun, and he's pointing at his head. Is murder wrong? Answer me that. What are you going to do? Shoot his hand? You just arrived. He's about to press on the button. You have a split second decision. What do you do? Do you shoot? Do you kill? Or not, even I don't know what I would do. Is it a good thing to kill? Is it a bad thing to kill? In general, it's bad, but why? What's important is why. Why is it bad to kill? A lot of people just be like, cause, cause it's, cause, cause, I don't know. Because it's bad, because I was taught it. I make the choice to consider life as good, and therefore murder is bad. 
That is why murder is bad. Because I choose life. And because I'm stealing what I call infinite potential. Because whatever we do ripples out through time and space. I believe that your soul is your infinite ripple through time. Whatever Gandhi left behind upon the people who listened to him and who believed in him and who are trying to teach other people, that is your infinite potential. It will never stop. It will ripple out through the universe and it might fade or become something entirely different, but it'll still be you. That's what you're stealing. You're stealing. You're stealing infinite potential. You're stealing infinity upon infinity upon infinity just by taking one single life. And that's what I want to avoid. I want us to know why we do things. What is natural? Tell me. Welcome, welcome one and all to Kieran's Shopping Centre. Now, the, K the Kieran's Shopping Centre today is going to be presenting four different types of, 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 of ways to wipe your ass. Now, it's very simple. I have four prototypes down here that I'm going to show you one by one and what to do with them. The first one is the fold. Now, the fold is pretty straightforward. You fold the piece of paper, make it thick enough, and then you wipe your ass with it. Simple, effective. Now, the second one, the second thing is called, uh, 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 it's called the pinch. Okay, now the pinch, the pinch is a little more dangerous because you are actually pinching yourself down there. I would tell you that you should avoid the pinch unless you want to avoid spreading because that is the strong point of the pinch. The pinch, you just have to take it as such and once you have placed it upon your rectum, you all you have to do is pinch and pull. Pinch and pull and nothing spreads anywhere. That is the second. Now, the third one, the third one is this one and it's called the tapper. The tapper is for, uh, 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 it's to check what's happening down there at first. You just press, you just dab, 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 you tap her. Tap, 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 tap. And then you observe and you see what you have and there's minimum spreadage, so it's wonderful. And the last one, of course, the last one, the known one, which I do not understand why it exists, but for some people, they find their, if they find their, their happiness in this product, then, uh, or in this way uh, to wipe your ass, then, then good for them. Okay, it's called, and we all know it, it's called the scrunch. Now, once we scrunch it up into a ball, we do have, we do have perfect control over everything. Yet, if you do this, you run the risk, I am, I repeat this, you run the risk of putting something onto your fingers. And what, that's not what we want, we want to avoid the fingers, avoid the fingers. Now, that was lovely, that was my uh, little summary, my little tutorial on how to wipe your ass at Kieran's lovely Market Emporium show. So, I will see you next time, and uh, uh, as, the, as the saying goes, once, if you swallow a coconut, you, you, you trust your anus. My name is Kieran McCam, and I am signing out. Do you ever feel like breaking down? Do you ever feel out of place? Like somehow you just don't belong and no one understands you? Do you ever want to run away? Maybe even lock yourself in your room with the radio on turned up so loud that no one hears you screaming? Nah. You don't know what it's like when nothing feels alright. You don't know what it's like to be like me. Bring around a rosy, a pocket full of posy, a tissue, a tissue, they all fall down. Nursery rhymes really can be ridiculous. What does it mean? Okay, bring around a rosy, I don't even know what a rosy is. A pocket full of posy, that sounds like a made up word. A tissue, a tissue, they all fall down. Did you sneeze or something? You sneeze around the posy and now the posy's all fallen down. But what about the rosy? Where's the rosy in all this? Hang on, are you saying that the posy is on the rosy? I'm not too sure. Because you have a pocket full of posy, so no, no, you probably just, like you have posy in your hands and you're around a rosy for some reason and and then you, you sneeze twice and once you sneeze twice, you all your posy has gone all over the rosy. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> yeah. One friend, two friend, three friend, four, five friend, six friend, seven friend, more. Hello, my name is Charlie. What's your real name, Kilitzo? Okay. This is Mila Mila Jovovich. <laughs> Mila Jovovich. And this is. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> the grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Welcome to Song Dissection by Kieran. Today we're going to dissect a nursery rhyme. The grand old Duke of York. 
So far, so good. We had 10,000 men. I assume that a Duke of York uh, has 10,000 men at his disposal, yes? He marched them up to the top of the hill, he marched them down again. A drill? Maybe a drill. And when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Let's think about this for a moment. What's the point of making 10,000 men go up and then declaring that they're up and suddenly they go down and then you declare they're down? Why would anyone do this? What kind of nursery rhyme would do this? When they were up, they were up. Is it sexual? Did you try to have sex with your 10,000 men? You observed it and then you suddenly decide that you want to put it into a song. Well, how mean is that? And were they all up together? How, how is that possible? It's like, did you order them to be up or something? Did you say you? Get a boner. No. But it does get me thinking about what's obvious. It's funny how we assume that what we know, everybody else is known. When we say something to them and they don't get it, we're really frustrated. Oh, you don't get it? I mean, are you, are you stupid? Are you stupid? It's not because someone doesn't know something that you know that they're stupid. You think it's obvious, but it's not so obvious. I think one of the fundamental problems in our world is that we don't understand one another. And we don't want to. We don't try to. There's so many people around me that are pessimistic about the world. The world is doomed, right? But obviously with that kind of thinking, you're gonna doom the world. If you don't act, if you don't do anything, nothing's gonna change. If you don't believe in a new world, you're not gonna get a new world. So my goal is to make everybody believe that a change is possible. We need to understand one another more. We need to want to understand one another more. And stating the obvious is something that you need to do. I have a, a grand vision of the world in which all the pieces fit, or at least I'm trying to get that grand vision. And it's not so simple, because you have to take everyone's point of view into account. As soon as you hear a new, a new point of view, you have to, to put yourself into question. I don't assume that you know what I mean, so I explain myself a lot. When they were up, they were up, and when they were down, they were down. That's a nursery rhyme. I just hope you got it. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Only you, only you can share this video, oh, share this video. Oh. Ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe, only you.